This is the case file of Jane Doe. We've had this case file here at the police department for 42 years. And now we're glad to say that we finally identified who Jane Doe is. We now know her real name and we now can share that with her relatives. And here to give you a timeline of the entire case is Assistant Chief Jim Prevatera, and with him we have civilian investigator Brenda Stevenson, who's been working on this case for years, and she's the one that's been able to put all of those loose ends together in order to come up with the resolution. On the early morning hours of June 9th, 1973, just after midnight, a teenage girl was struck and killed by a vehicle in the 800 block of 11th Avenue South here in the city. She ultimately died from her injuries, and detectives who investigated the death eventually charged a man with having pushed a girl in front of a car that morning. Uh, they believed that it was a result of an altercation between uh, the man and this young lady, and the charges were ultimately placed on him and later dropped by the state attorney's office who was unable to prove the man's intent. The girl who detectives were certain wasn't from this area uh, was unable to be positively identified despite having been in contact with police officers just days prior to her death. Uh, eventually she became a Jane Doe and uh, the medical examiner interned her at Memorial Park Cemetery in an unmarked grave. She was stopped in what we called a field interview um, hours prior to her death by two officers who thought she was someone else they were looking for and she identified herself to those two officers as Janice Marie Brock. She provided the date of birth of June 17, 1953, which obviously would have made her appear to be an adult to the two officers at the scene. Um, she was obviously not the, the subject that officers were looking for, and, and she, she went about her way and so did the officers. Her true date of birth is June 17, 1957. Law enforcement has an obligation to notify family of the death of their loved one. And in this case, we didn't know who the loved one was, but we knew family was out there looking for her. So it was our job to try and identify her and notify family of her, of her passing. When did you personally know that you, you had this? What was the moment where you knew for sure felt finally calm and felt like it was done? The day Timothy Young faxed me his adoption papers and I saw that name, I knew it was his sister. You talk about there when you contacted him too. How we confirm that? <coughs> as far as to him, the death notification. Yeah. I received the um, DNA final FedEx report from Bodie Lab. I reviewed it with the analyst over the phone before I made contact with Nick Ken. And on the following morning, Friday morning, I called Timothy Young from my personal cell phone to do um, the death notification. Um, and he was obviously very upset and started to cry, as anyone would. And I cried with him. It was a very emotional time. I'm happy for his closure. And at least maybe now he has some answers and Marie can go home. Why she ran away? They came from a very unhappy household. And the adoption... Um, did not help matters. The, 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 she was very, very unhappy. And the brother told me that on the morning she ran away, she packed a pillowcase and said, Timmy, I'm leaving, and I'm running away. And she took the school bus, and she took the sc to school. She went to school, and she did not return. I think Mr. Timothy Young has been on a very long journey looking for his sister. And I don't think finding her already have, have been passed away was the conclusion to his journey. And I'm just sorry for his loss, but now he does have answers to the questions that he's had for 42 years.